Hey guys, it's Polly Post here, and so I just got my new um, shoes, and they're Grisco 2007s, and they look something like this, and they're extremely clean and new, and everything's perfect about them, but not for long, because we are going to be tearing them apart, and stepping on them, and breaking them. Uh, it's just what they do. It's just what they're for. So, um, I was showing you my break-in pro like, process, like, showing, showing you, because I know sometimes I talked about break-in process, but I just said them. Now I'm going to visually show you what I do, just as, like, guidance, if you want to use some of these things, or just, just to show you guys. So, um, I have my, the things that I need. So I have, uh, I do not have pliers. This is as close as it comes to, but these get the job done. Uh, some a lighter and uh, some markers like to mark which one is which um please do not like use lighters if your parents are not aware that you're using it some parents would like to supervise you if you're doing this but my mom does know so it's like I'm not just doing it um, and I have done it a lot of times so I'm very comfortable with doing it but it is up to you whether like or not you want to do this step, this little step they're already sewn so we're just gonna Go with the break-ins. Hey, enjoy. Okay, so the first thing that I do is I take my shoe and I take care of the ribbon first, which is I take my lighter and just go over the tip of it really quickly. And this keeps it from fraying. And then I just blow on it really quickly just to keep it from being hot. Um, and then it's a lot harder. Like, it feels like there's a layer of, like, glue or something like that. So it um, keeps it from fraying and it just reduces the chance of it happening. So I, I just keep doing that to all of my ribbons, but be sure to glide really quickly. You don't want to stay on one spot too much because then it might blacken from like burning. So you want to just go really fast across it and be sure it's nice and cool before you touch it because you don't want it to get burnt. I'm going to move on to the next shoe. Um, some require a little bit more, like if you see little strands sticking out, you go over that area a couple more times and uh, be sure not to do it too much and just be careful again do not burn your fingers or don't just and if you see fire just blow it out <laughs> alright so next thing I did is I already did this to one of my shoes is I rip off the shank and take out the um a nail um, but the thing is is the nail is really high up normally the nails of my other shoes were all the way in the back region so for this one, I didn't really pull it out, but all I did was take out the shank. Um, so I just pulled it, pulled it, pulled it, and then there we go. It all ripped out, and this makes it easier in the following steps. Um, in a step later on, it makes it a lot easier to break it in. So you'll see that get fixed. It also allows lots of mobility. Now you can use pliers, but since I don't have pliers, I usually use like these little things to pull out the nail but since I don't have any I just kinda just go through it just to pluck out the little pointy parts next thing I do is that I step on the boxes of my shoes to kinda give myself a little more mobility and so you know your feet are not rounded like that your feet are flat so you know I wish you could hear the cracking noise that these shoes made Jesus God I was actually scared and I was gonna stop but um, it's important to get it good down there, and it's a lot more flatter um, than round, so it kind of matches up with your feet better. So the next thing I'm going to do is um, mark my shoe right and left. Um, normally people don't do this, but I do. Um, I mark it right and left just for which one's more comfortable and which one feels more right on that foot. So I just do that real quickly with a permanent marker so that it stays. Um, I also do put uh, the number of the point shoes, like I label them my first point shoes one and then the second one's two and then these one's three and four and five and so on. So I do label them so I never get the pairs confused. And I also do take off the stickers. But this one is the step that actually, you know when I told you to pull off the um, the shank, this was why. This makes it easier. So, so you fold down the um, 
thing right there and uh, you see the gap um, of my arch you can actually see the shading of the gap but now that I bended it don't you see how it's sticking to my um, arch now that really shows that it's like actually going a good like way like it's going totally across and it's helping like support my feet so now you can really tell when it's perfectly on your arch now the next thing that I do is I do just a little bit of um, demi point stuff because demi point really is a struggle so I kind of just jump onto demi point just a little bit um, and then I do go over point and as you can see it does look a lot better than before but um, I am going to keep pushing down on the demi point to hopefully loosen it up a little bit. I did not feature it in this video, but normally I just put some water on the sides, not getting it anywhere near the box. I'm um, just on the sides and I fill it with newspaper so my shoe expands uh, a little bit and loosens up so that um, the sides are a little bit easier to go on to demi point with. Um, those parts, these parts are also a little bit hard, but that's what I do for that. Oops. Okay. And then, um, <clears throat> I just push down a little bit on the sides to kind of loosen it up a bit, um, and kind of just make it a little more flexible to my feet, because I, on the sides of my feet, I do have a little bit bony, a little boniness, so that normally helps, um, just expand the shoe a little bit to make it more comfortable. Again, with the demi point kind of thing, I'm just trying to simulate demi point because it does hurt when breaking them in. Just bend them a little bit. Okay. So the next thing that I do is I deal with the um, elastics. Not the elastics. Oops. The um, jawstrings. Oopsies. Um, Alright, so I do knot them at the point where I feel is perfect for my feet. Like, I put them on and I tighten them this much, this much, so then I knot it and then I cut off the extras because normally I don't change that. And then I just kind of, you can't see it that much, but I just kind of go over the sides lightly so it doesn't fray. Then again, I will be showing a demonstration of how what fraying looks like if you don't understand what I mean by it. And I will show you um, how when you put the uh, lighter over it and the difference that it makes. I'll show that in a couple minutes probably. But um, I'm doing the same thing to the other shoe as well. And then I'm going to take the lighter and do it all over again. And just You should position it upwards. Or if you really don't want to touch the other parts of the shoe, you can use something to clamp on it and to keep it away from the rest. So you just go over that. I know the fire looks really expanded, but it's really not, so it does make a difference. Just clamping it down will keep it from touching the rest of the shoe if that's what you really don't want. Okay, next thing that I do is that I um, I use, I use fire, the fire to, um, to loosen up the glue a little bit, um, and then, and then I can squeeze down on it a little bit easier in order to actually break it in a little bit more and expand it just a bit and make it more moldable to my feet, which is really important. So uh, I'm going to press down the sides a little and now that it's easier, it just makes it like a lot simpler to push down, less strength used. So I go over it again and then uh, be sure to go really fast. You don't want anything to, you know, um, kind of burn a little too much. You just want it to be evenly spread out and then squeeze down. Okay, and then um, also I keep the insides from fraying by um, doing the same lighter thing that I do. Um, I do cut them a little shorter because I feel like there's a lot of excess and it just 
hits my feet a little bit and it just annoys me. And then after that, I just want to show you really quickly what fraying is. This is what fraying looks like when all of the um, strands are kind of separating. And then I'm going to put the fryer on it just to show you how it makes a difference. So look at the fraying and then if you put a little bit on, just look at it. It's all gone. All the fray is gone and it'll stay that way. The next thing that I do is you can um, just do little uh, marks on the bottom of the shoe in order to create traction so you don't slip and slide too much. A little on the top, a little bit on the, the um, bottom and things like that. But the um, grease go that I have already has like little checkered marks so um, I don't really, I didn't do it for this shoe but in general I do. And for the next step, what I do is that, um, you see how it's really hard on that area? This causes really um, loud pounding when you're dancing. So I like to kind of beat it down a little bit just to make it softer so that when you're doing jumps and when you land, it doesn't make a big clanking noise, which can be really annoying um, if you're doing a rehearsal or if you're on stage or whatever you're doing, it just gets distracting during class. So I just beat them down a little bit with this. Um, I'm using my skateboard because it's right next to me, so. So the another thing that I use my skateboard for is to make um, the little fuzz come out of the satin, like kind of make it a little bit um more fluffy-ish, uh, a little scratched up so that it creates traction on the edges. So when I'm rolling onto point, I do not slip. I sometimes do it on the tops too, but that's totally entirely up to you. But um, I also do file down on the um, sides of the sole region because I feel like it makes me uneven because the sole is like a little bit um, thicker than the rest of the shoe. So it can get really um, unevenly when you're just standing regularly. So I just uh, file it down just really easily without touching the satin because it'll begin to fluff up and you know it just kind of looks a little bit bad so I try to stay away from that and then I just go over it really quickly and then I do that on both shoes as well this is an, just an option but I feel like it makes it more rounded rather than just a giant like strip paste like pasted on the bottom of the shoe it makes it more rounded and more kind of like natural feeling so when you're standing regularly your feet aren't going from side to side it's more like just evenly when you stand down So the next thing is just to go up and show you the difference. It's definitely so much looser and nicer and um, I still am having problems with demi point so I'm just going to jump onto it a little bit just to make it a little easier, maybe make it a little more flexy um, and mold it to my feet. And it's really hard to roll, like it's really impossible to roll. but. Um, Rolling through is made a little bit harder because of this. Just go up and down onto it so it makes it easier. But as you can see, the shoe is actually kind of loosening up, but uh, it's still a problem with the uh, tiny point, but uh, that can be fixed, um, which is why I'm doing that thing where I put water and newspaper on my shoes, and it really helps. But um, you're going to have to just jump around on demi point for a bit to make it easier. Um, that's probably the best way to do it, so you should just stick to that, and dancing in them will also help it loosen up. And, uh, thanks for watching guys, short video, not really that short, but pretty short video just showing you how I broke in my grease cups. Thanks for watching!